fascinating study just came out that followed a thousand patients with a genetic disorder called Lynch syndrome. Now what Lynch syndrome does is makes you predisposed to developing colon cancer and other cancers. It's a predisposition, so something in the environment kind of sets off that gene and you get that cancer. They took a thousand people and they gave them a resistant starch in a pill form for two years, the equivalent of eating one slightly unripe banana. And what they saw was, they then followed them after 10 years. They did it for two years, followed them up to 10 years. And what they found was, while it didn't decrease colon cancer, and we wouldn't expect it to decrease colon cancer because studies have shown that resistant starch when consumed feeds your good bacteria and that creates a special fatty acid, which you've probably heard about, called butyrate or short-chain fatty acid. And that short-chain fatty acid has all kinds of benefits. It is anti-inflammatory throughout the body. It is absorbed in the body and it helps prevent colon cancer, but it does not seem to be good enough to counteract the negative effects of meat consumption, things like N-nitrosamines and compounds like that. And so we wouldn't expect just eating resistant starch to decrease someone who has a 60 to 80% lifetime risk of getting colon cancer from preventing it from getting colon cancer. But what they did find is that there was a 60% reduction in the risk of getting cancers in the upper uh, esophagus area and other parts of the body. That's a dramatic decreased risk in cancer, all from taking for two years, taking a resistant starch pill. We have found a lot of benefits in resistant starch. First of all, when you're eating resistant starches, you're actually getting about half the calories from a regular carbohydrate. So uh, these resistant starches are harder to eat. Now, how do you get more resistant starches in your diet? You eat beans, you eat barley, you eat oats. Um, what's really interesting is if you cook a carbohydrate, like let's say, you, you cook some pasta, you cook some rice, and then you refrigerate it, you create resistant starch. And that resistant starch now, when absorbed, has several benefits. Because it's resistant, because you're not absorbing it in your small intestine, you're gonna get less of a glycemic effect. So you're gonna get less of a rise in your blood sugars. Uh, you're also gonna be feeding your good bacteria just like fiber does. It's actually a prebiotic. So you're gonna create this good bacteria that creates butyrate. The butyrate feeds the cell lining of the intestinal wall. Uh, creating uh, less cellular perme permeability uh, and anti-inflammatory effects throughout the whole body. And obviously this has an anti-cancer effect too. So we really should be looking to try to increase our resistant starch. I have bananas that are not completely ripe that I put in the freezer and then use in my smoothies. I eat a lot of oats. I eat a lot of beans and I like to cook pasta and rice and put it in the refrigerator and they reheat it. So very interesting study. Uh, we definitely need to be feeding that good bacteria. In fact, prebiotics are probably way more important than probiotics. You eat a probiotic that really not getting enough of it. And if it's not getting fed the right amount of foods or the right foods, it will die off. The prebiotics are the key.